Good morning, folks. This is Greg Judy in Green Pastures Farm. Man, is it a beautiful morning. I just... Woo! Bringing the bulls up to, to this civil pasture. We got 74 bulls coming at us. And, uh... This is just a beautiful, rested, recovered farm. And we were here <clears throat> less than 30 days ago, around 28. And uh, these bulls are in for a treat. There's orchard grass, all kinds of orchard grass. Lots of fescue, clovers. Automolly sprouts. Uh, just all kinds of wood sprouts in amongst that civil pasture. Oh, I mean, they are looking good. They're really chunking the weight on. And the hair is starting to come off of the older bulls. Your younger bulls will hold on to their hair a little bit longer than the old bulls. Well, 87, you're almost just slick. Whew. 3618, you're looking good too. You're almost slick. That's a young bull right there. He's not even a year old yet. There's another young one. You lost your ear tag. I know you're one of the... We kept six uh, of the nine 2019 bulls. He's one of them. He is a chunk. But we, we pulled up this morning on the farm that the bulls were on, and uh, every single bull was laying down. They were already full, and you can kind of tell just the way they're walking. They're, they're kind of full, but uh, once they get out here and examine how far they can go, well, you can already see some of them putting their heads down out there. Just a one, wonderful time of the year when you can offer all the bulls it's about everything they want. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful day to be a bull on Green Pastures Farm. They have, uh, they've got plenty to eat here. There's no danger of that. And you can see the, uh, the clovers. The clovers are really starting to come into this farm. This is all broom sedge. And uh, we cut tons of cedars off of this ridge. Probably, I don't know, four or 5,000 cedars. And got rid of them. We saved the, the big ones. Uh, we made some really nice lumber out of those. Oh, there's a good looking bull. This is the only four year old we have. You see, he's, he's packing some weight. That's about as big as they'll get. Uh, we weighed him the other day when we, when we did the semen test, and he was right at 1,400 pounds. So he's not going to get much heavier than that. In 833, uh, he was right at, he's a three-year-old. And uh, he was like 1150. Guys, if you want to uh, grab that... Uh, Dodge, just bring the mineral feeder up here. You think them bulls are hungry? No, they're lazy. <laughs> is it lazy? They're just, they're just full, aren't they? Yeah. I, I just made the mention when we came by them a while ago, uh, they are all laying down pretty much. You know, yeah, so that's the perfect time to be grazing. Yep. Yep. I see them up there, though. I'm going to follow them up through there. I think they're. They're starting to put their head down now. Yep. So, we'll see y'all in a little bit. Yep. 
So this is a uh, this is one of our lease farms. We've had this one. I guess this is going on the fourth year. Um, actually, be four years this fall. This this was uh, all timber right here. This looked like that behind it. And uh, Jacob was one of our guys working for us at that time. Jacob and I came in with chainsaws, and we we cut. We cut all that out of there. And we left trees spaced, I don't know, every 50, 60 feet. Um, some of these along here, this is an old fence row. We left we left some of these because we were afraid our chainsaws would get into wire that was grown into the trees. We took some out though. We don't, I don't think we ruined too many chains. But, you know, this is, to me, this is remarkable taking uh, dense uh, unimproved timber and taking the trees out enough to get the sunlight down to the, the ground. Folks, and this is what we got. Now this, in this timber, this never had any lime put on it. I don't think you'd want to bring a lime truck in here. You'd probably tear it up. But this is just animals and unrolling hay. And you can see the residue of the hay. And uh, pull this back. Oh, yeah. Golly, that ground is so loamy. Look at that. Oh, and there's moles. That's what the moles have done. There's a mole. There's a mole. Uh, there's a mole den going through this. Folks, that's just gorgeous stuff. You wonder why the grasses and the legumes are doing so well in here? And see, there's a there's a little baby autumn olive. Uh, the sheep will be coming in here. They're following the bulls. And I promise you, those sheep are going to nail that thing. That, that baby autumn olive is going to have a very rough life. There's a bunch of it in here. But uh, the, here's some more there. You can just see it. It's all in here. But the sheep, uh, where they're at right now, there's there was a spot like this in that paddock, and they absolutely hammered it. Absolutely hammered it. They, they stripped every single tree. There wasn't anything left, just the stalks. So if you've got unimproved timber and you want to get some grass growing in it, you've got to do this. You've got to open it up. And you'll get some saw logs, uh, you'll, you'll get some uh, shiitake mushroom logs, and then you're also going to get some really nice forage in a few years. It doesn't come the first year. You'll get some, you'll get some just from that first winter, but I can tell each year this is just getting better and better and better. So this was not done with a bulldozer, this was done with a chainsaw. Um, you could use a dozer on areas like this where it's fairly flat. I wouldn't want to put a dozer on the side of a hill and try and push trees out. You might lose your farm. I mean, all the soil would just wash off. But up here, you could probably get by doing it. It's just going to, it's going to be more costly, you know, to push all those trees out. But when you did get it done, you would be rid of the stumps. Uh, we've got stumps in here. So if you brush hog it, you know, You've got to raise your brush hog up pretty high. And I, I typically will brush hog this about every two to three. I think I've brush hogged it once since we leased it. But I raise it up high because I don't want to hit one of these mega stumps in here. I was going to show you one. There's one right there. Now that That is actually a uh, an oak. That's an oak stump. You're not going to... That's not going to rot out for a little while. So if you had your brush hog down, let's say three inches, trying to scalp your farm, you would hit that. And you're probably going to break, uh, you're going to break something. That stump's not going to get. There's some bigger ones in there than that, I know. It's funny how the forage comes in and just kind of covers them. Here's one. Now that was higher than four inches. That was probably, yeah, it's four, four or five. But again, it's solid as a rock. It hasn't rotted a bit. So the cattle don't care about the stumps. 
the brush hog does. <laughs> There's a little oak sprout coming up. We've got some pretty nice trees in here. There's some pretty young trees I kept. And so if you wanted to protect, there's some firewood, some trees that we're going to chop up for firewood. But if you wanted to protect some of these young ones, the young oaks, uh, I use a cattle panel. And I cut it into thirds, a wire cattle panel, and then I just stake it with steel posts. So it's a triangular shape. And uh, that, that keeps the cattle from working them over and we just got in a whole bunch of wood chips from the folks that do the uh, trimming around the power lines and so those wood chips are going to go on a lot of our trees that we planted just to keep the fescue and the grass back from the trunk and uh you know so this the young trees don't have to compete with all that forage sucking the juice away from them and the, and the nutrients this is, uh, these are all bodarks. These are the Osage Orange I was talking about. Man, that's a beautiful, beautiful post. Uh, those posts will last uh, 80 to 100 years. They don't rot. Uh, they're anti-rot. Each year they just get harder when you put them in the ground. And uh, they are, ant once they get dry, you put them in the ground... They're not conductive, so you can hook a hot wire on it. I don't. I usually use an insulator because even a wet hedge post, when when they get wet and it rains for seven days and you got a hot wire stapled directly to that post, you're going to get some leakage. So, you know, just use a good insulator and you don't have to worry with it. So, the beautiful thing about those hedge, if you can put those things in the ground four and a half foot, put sackcrete on them, and I'm talking, you know, some of those bigger ones, you don't need an H-brace. You can pull five high tensile wires, but you're going to need sackcrete around the base of it. And it's got to be a minimum of four feet. Five foot would be better in the ground. Man, look at this. Whew. This is nuts. Those bulls are going to look like they're on full feed grazing on this. So again, we're, we're opening up. We're giving them bigger areas. Uh, the bull mob is growing. <clears throat> we're going to be bringing in uh, close to 20 more bulls. So we're going to be up to around 90. Um, <clears throat> these are bulls that are from my cows and my bulls that I've sold to other folks. And so they've raised some really nice young bulls, and they're using the same management practices that we are. They rotate them. They've got pretty darn good grass. They broke the hot wire. And, of course, we don't pick out anything that has, uh, you know, bad attitude or anything like that. We're just not going to deal with that. They've got to be docile, and be, you know, you've got to be able to handle them. You don't want something out here that's just goofy. But man, look at that grass and the forage this is just nuts i mean this stuff is up to my top of my boots so yeah spring at green pastures farm is looking pretty darn good and i'm gonna go ahead and sign off there and uh we're gonna see you all down the road hit that subscribe button on the way out and uh, y'all have a great day